Hi everybody, I'm Clarence Reynolds. February 14th, 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of the first 911 call made in the United States. So for half a century, 911 has been the gateway between the public and emergency help. The success and reliability of the system is going to be greatly improved with the implementation of Next Generation or NG911. Here to discuss the NG911 system and some of the issues surrounding deployment is Jerome DeWitt, Vice President of Network Solutions at Airbus DS Communications. Jerome, thank you for being with us. Glad to be here. Jerome, the current 911 system hasn't really changed in 50 years, so how is NG911 going to be different? So NG911 is really looking to replace the existing voice-centric you know, circuit switch environment of today with a new multimedia broadband capable IP network. And when you get into NG911, it allows citizens to communicate with the public safety officials in new, you know, in new ways. Things as text to 911, real-time text, and eventually video. This new multimedia content will provide the telecommunicators that receive that information much greater situational awareness and thereby allowing them to be you know, appropriate in their dispatch and response to an incident. As you know, every second matters when you're in a, a moment of need. Also, NG911 allows and enables an increased speed and reliability and survivability of that public safety network that we now have established through additional redundancy and diversity of the network. And I guess the last part of it is, you know, NG911 really facilitates improving the collaboration versus real-time sharing of data and content between various public safety officials. And this is something that was just not possible in the current legacy E911 environment. Yeah, that's really important. And Airbus DS has recently migrated, for instance, the City of Philadelphia system to a new call handling solution that pretty much lays the groundwork for the transition to NG911. Tell us about that use case. Sure. So Philadelphia was running on a, on a very older platform. Part of it, the technology was, you know, at a point of obsolescence, where basically the manufacturer of the various piece parts were no longer in a position to be able to support it. You know, it was a three-site system handling police, fire, and training, and then a city hall center for, for a backup environment. You know, those three systems, you know, you had to individually operate and manage each of them independently. They were not a cohesive system, right? And there was a lot of, you know, mechanical, you know, data technology supporting all of that. So in an NG911 system that we now have upgraded to, we basically expanded all of those centers into a single system while still maintaining operational separation as per their current uh, operating plan. Right? It's one unenterprise IP-based system that services all the locations. You know, any operational administrative change that they do is you know, done once, not you know, n times for each of the sites. Right? So it helps them reduce their maintenance costs and you know, simplifies the overall service and management of the system for the full life cycle of deployment. And, and it's, you know, it's all on next generation technology. It's much more software-centric, more IP-based, less based on, you know, mechanical boxes and, you know, this older technology platform, which are all what we call time division multiplex solution set. So, you know, in the end of the day, they now have a much more modern system. While it's still predominantly voice centric in their call management today, it is all set up for them to take this additional content once it becomes available to them. So, Jerome, what are some of the difficulties that municipalities would face when they're transitioning away from the legacy infrastructures and, and systems that they have in place now? So I would say the most predominant place where uh, municipalities are struggling is funding, right? They do, there's a, an adoption process to go from the old technology to the new technology. And during that transition period, you know, you're almost paying for two systems for that transitional period. There's other things such as network diversity and the you know, elevation of skills that's needed to support the operation and maintenance of the entry technology you know, that comes at a higher cost that contributes to their overall funding challenges. Likewise, you know, what I talked about a little bit earlier, there's now this new media type that's, and content that's being presented as part of this new technology. Right? You have to store that content, which is you know, very data intensive. Those are additional costs that they have to consider. 
And then there's an operational challenge to all this as well that, you know, the jurisdictions are still actively working through where Tamil communicators in the past were only able to listen in and visualize what was occurring on the scene with this new content now that they're going to be able to see physically what's occurring at the incident, which is something that they're not used to managing. And that's definitely uh, the bright side. And what has been the, the feedback so far for entities who have started to upgrade their systems? So the feedback's been very positive. You know, we have a, a process and methodology to, to make them through that transition. Um, you know, many of the PSAPs that we serve already have made that transition from a call handling perspective within those public safety answering points. And then from an operation perspective, you know, they're still predominantly dealing with voice as they work through the, the aspects of seeing more from, from the incidents when the request from assistance comes in. And Jerome, what in your opinion is it going to take to see a more robust deployment of the technologies that are necessary to get us to a national NG911 system? So, you know, we should start seeing, you know, a growing number of these NG911 deployments uh, as additional funding becomes available. For example, you know, this year, uh, the National 911 Program Office has been releasing about $115 million worth in grants as part of the National 911 Grant Program. You know, this program was established under the Middle Class Tax Acts released of 2012, so it's starting to now start to roll out. Uh, so that will certainly help on the funding side. Uh, additionally, and that's critically important as part of that legislation, was also, you know, introduced at the federal level. So the next generation 911 911 Act of 2017 was introduced both into the House of Congress for consideration with establishing funding and guidelines to accelerate the implementation and adoption of next generation 911 at a nationwide level. Well, we hope to see it uh, throughout the country. And Jerome DeWitt, we appreciate your insights. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. And also, thank you for watching. We'd like to hear from you, so reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter. And you can see more videos at TIANow.org and on our YouTube channel. TIA Now will be at Mobile World Congress 2018 in two weeks, and coverage begins on Tuesday, February 27th. And if you'd like to participate in our programming, just visit us at TIANow.org slash MWC. Thanks for watching.